Live. Welcome to Revolver Live, guys. The gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today I'm joined by two-thirds of the three stooges of our crew, <laughs> Brian Rabbit, the king of all things destiny. What's going on, brother? How's it going, man? How you doing today? I'm, I'm always feeling good. I, I genuinely am a very positive person. Yeah, and I just cleaned the, the garage, so I'm feeling pretty good about life. That wouldn't have me too positive, to be totally honest. <laughs> well, once it's done, you feel good. While you're doing it, you don't feel so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of the thing of looking back. Hindsight's twenty twenty. And speaking of positive, the only guy so positive I can never say anything bad about him. Wilson, how you feeling today, my friend? Feeling good, man. It's a beautiful, like, 77 degrees outside. I haven't been being productive like Briar, though, and, like, cleaning garages and shit. I've just been playing Warframe. <laughs> it's it's productive. been like... You gotta get down to that grind, been, man. Right. It's, it's been like 90 degrees here in Atlanta, and I feel the heat Ooh. when I look outside today, and I saw my sons cutting the grass. You know, that, that look on their face when they saw me creeping through the window and looking at them, uh -huh. they were like, this is real fucked up, Dad, but the yard looks great. <laughs> That's great. Good to hear. Nice. <laughs> Welcome to the awesome. show, guys. Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, always check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. With that, welcome to Revolver Live, Episode 5. What's going on, guys? I'll tell you what's not going on, Gary. Gary's not yeah, here, I man. Just totally abandoned us. Like in our yeah. hour of need, episode five, the most important episode we've ever had, and he's just not here. He's not here. Well, you know, we couldn't get <laughs> Gary to be here in the flesh, but we do have uh, Gary's stand-in, which mm -hmm. which is very, very close to his heart. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that, that the image that you guys see today is always within Gary, no matter what he's doing, where he's going. Uh, you know, it's a part of him. So thank you, Gary, for representing mm -hmm. wherever you are in the States. Believe it or not, Gary's in the United States. That's right. Oh, he's uh, uh, what is he? He's fighting off a uh, a um, secret assignment. Secret assignment. Secret, oh, okay. I thought it secret was, assignment. Uh, I heard he was brought here to like sell more Vitas. <laughs> he was brought in by Sony America to sell more Vitas. <laughs> he, Sony he UK. May... <laughs> Sony, Sony UK. UK pay for his expenses <laughs> on how to get Sony US get their Vita <laughs> shit together. <laughs> how to sell more shit. Yeah. Well, Gary, I'm sure he'll do well. Gary has a, a knack for making people spend money that they don't want to spend or in my case, don't even fucking have. So uh, I'm sure he'll do very well. That was how Briar introduced Gary to me. He said, uh, I'm talking to this guy, Gary, and I'm just buying a whole bunch of shit that I didn't think I knew. I need it until I talk to Gary. And I was like, I don't want to fucking meet this guy. Now look at me getting ready to buy a gaming PC. You need all those frames, Beastly. You need oh, those I gotta, frames. I got to talk to you after the show about that gaming PC. I meant to talk to you about it before the show. Remind right, well, me, Beastly. Remind me. I, I, I shall. You got it, my friend. All right. So we're going to do some house cleaning today, some housekeeping. Housekeeping. And uh, get to our feedback. Does that mean I got to go back to the garage? No, you're done. You're <laughs> okay. done with that. <laughs> what you need to do is just get have more kids, have and more that gets kids. done by itself, you know. Man, straight from the you man think himself. He's fucking up that garage in the first place. <laughs> hey, look, man, you, you got you got to plan ahead. Right now, my sons will be out of the house another two or three years, uh -huh. but I got girls coming up, so it's coming right back around. Now, when the baby gets older, that's when I'll start to panic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When Ellie turns sixteen, they're gonna say, "Wow, that little girl's out there." Cutting the grass. When, it, when it's her turn to do it, then I'll start panicking. I'll start talking to my wife to see if she'll go out and do it. By that time, you'll be you'll be able to move into a place that has a that has like a lawn mowers. You know, I, I'll move to an old folks home by then. Yeah, I'll only be right. like fifty, and they'll be like, oh, "Sir, you're too young to." Be. I'm like, "Hey, look, it's my money. I don't want to cut grass." Ever. A community for active adults. Yes. <laughs> and by active, we mean gamers to the full. The nerds. <laughs> the nerds. All right, Wilson, uh, what do ahead, we have Lisa. as far as our feedback? I think you got a little bit to go over today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We do got some feedback. So starting off with the Gmail section here, we have another topic suggestion from the one, the only Super Dan. Super, Super Dan. Dan, let me just say Super this, Dan. Dan. You're, you are the man. Uh, if we had a super fan... It would be Super Dan. And mm -hmm. somehow that makes sense. I am the guy who wrote the uh, theme song to Revolver Live. So I might mm -hmm. uh, you know, implement that on the next verse. Super Dan oh, right, is right. Like that. Oh, you think well, we'll get like a modified version of the, it of can the happen, Revolver Briar. theme? Yes. Oh, my God. 
that would could be show. Nice. You know, I mean, I wrote that in my dreams. So, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'm predisposed to being a rapper. I think it has something to do with my melanin. <laughs> but he says, uh, I don't understand what watermelon has to do with a w- rap. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Sometimes when you eat watermelon and you spit the seeds out, words are spelled in the seeds. Oh, yeah. and sometimes that's what they, they mean by spit and rap. Sometimes they, yeah. <laughs> sometimes they rhyme. So Superdan yeah. says this popped up because he lives about 15 minutes away from the largest arcade in North America named Fun Spot, which I have heard of, and I'm super jealous that Is you that live that New close Hampshire? to it. Yes, and they have uh, a lot of um, tournaments there every year. A lot of the guys, the biggest and the best, uh, that have the high score from a lot of these retro arcade consoles go there. I actually have a friend that goes there every year for the big uh, for the big powwow that they have. But uh, he says, what do you guys think about the feature of arcades and what arcade cabinet pinball machine or arcade game was your favorite growing up or even now? Seems like arcades are slowly fading away, which is sort of sad. I thought this would be something cool to talk about. Bring back some more memories of your favorite arcade games. Oh, that's that's a great topic. I think that's fantastic. And uh, Nick Owen here um, wants to give uh, his two cents as to why he thinks uh, Resident Evil 7 didn't sell as well. And he says, I believe this game didn't sell well because it didn't star the franchise names the Resident Evil fans have come to know. How do you feel about that, Beasley? Uh, I I completely do not believe that. Um, I, I think that the... When you hear Resident Evil, you don't think Chris Redfield or Leon Kennedy or uh, Jill or you don't think of those names. You think of Resident Evil and really what the mythos has been. I don't think anyone, if anyone was to play Resident Evil for characters, they'd only be concerned with Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 2. Because uh, as far as popularity goes, at least, I think Leon Kennedy is the favorite character. People like Resident Evil because it, it seems to carry on a story in a different way every time. It, it seemed like zombies, and it turned into Los Plagas, which is kind of a, uh, an infection, a virus, and it, it just morphed into this crazy thing that's Resident Evil 7. And I think over time, people have come to enjoy the way that the story has been told. That's a good point. My personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you guys think? Um, I almost kind of, like... I see it from both sides. I see it 50-50, to be honest. I do kind of think of some of the characters from Resident Evil when I think Resident Evil, but maybe that's that's just me. But I see what they were going with where they wanted it to be you. They didn't mm-hmm. want any sort of disconnect between you and what was going on. They wanted it to feel like it was you going through this particular experience. So I think they took a gamble, and it's unfortunate that it didn't pay off for them. I, I can no definitely problem. see where he's coming from, right? It's like you had... You had these games that were based on these characters and you're following these stories of these characters and following the story of the Umbrella Corp. And then you see this game, especially in advertising, where, oh, they switched it from third-person cameras to, to first-person cameras. And you no longer are one of these stars, guys, or you're no longer Leon Kennedy. You're no longer you know, one of these Chris guys Redfield, anymore. Yeah. It's like, what is this? Why does it even have the Resident Evil 7 name on it? You know, a Resident Evil name on it. It felt like a completely different franchise, especially at the get-go. Along the way, maybe some of those connections are added, but I could definitely see Resident Evil fans being like, why is this even called Resident Evil? For me, that was the biggest draw, Briar. When I saw the the trailers of this family, the Baker family, at first it looks like, you know, a Lost in the, the Woods type of story where you come across this insane cannibalistic family, but you know that's not the case because it has a Resident Evil name. So if anything, that made me more intrigued by finding out what was happening because you knew it was a Resident Evil game. You saw these people doing crazy things that seemed very creepy and you wanted to, for me at least, I wanted to find out that tie of the Resident Evil uh, franchise. And of course, when you play the game, you do actually see some people from the Resident Evil franchise history throughout this game. But yeah, for me, just seeing that was more intriguing than seeing Chris or Leon or uh, you know one of the Redfields on screen, I wanted to know how this actually tied into the past of the series. But I guess it's, you know, it's subjective, you know, for gamers. I guess a lot of people really do enjoy seeing these people. Uh, I, I personally enjoy seeing them, but sometimes seeing them can have a kind of bad experience, like Resident Evil 5, you know, Chris Redfield punching rocks. I mean, to me, that takes away from what Resident Evil or Chris Redfield met in the initial game and they kind of turned him into a superhero. And for me, it was really impressive to see them kind of go back to being an everyman kind of situ- situation or character. Yeah, I, and I can relate that- to Punching Rocks. That's how I've been training for MMA lately. Shit! I just, I well, just go right at those rocks. 
you know? mm-hmm. thug, thug life, bro. You got to get in there. You got to hit him harder. No, you got to get, get in there, Rocky. <laughs> get in there, Briar. <laughs> before, before we move on, I do want to touch on Super Dan's topic because that was a great topic. And if you guys would like your topics to be a part of the show, submit them at revolvergamescast at gmail.com like Super Dan does every week. Yeah, we're uh, going to add that favorite? one to the list. Well, we do got okay, more so, on Discord. We do got one more. Okay, we got more so feedback. We're, we're, go- we're going to talk about his topic uh, during during our topic. So, okay, continue on, my man. Awesome, awesome. Um, Blade Runner has a topic suggestion that says, I'd be inter- interested in a discussion about streaming, since all the Revolver guys are getting into it, maybe a topic on how to grow your channel, or even types of obstacles new streamers may find. This one has actually them. been... So what we do every week is we have a list, we have... Uh, a list or a, a spreadsheet basically where each of the hosts brings two topics to the table. And normally we have eight topics total brought to the table for each week. And any, t- and then we choose the, our six favorite for the week's show. Uh, since week one or two, that has been on the list of, I don't want to say rejects, but things that we want to get to, but haven't necessarily gotten to. So it's on our, it's on our short list of topics. Maybe we'll get it in for next week's show. Um, yeah. But it's definitely it's it, it's a fun thing to talk about, and it does really help. I know it does help, like because when you start streaming, it can be really confusing, and there's a bunch of sides to it. It's like you know the tech side of the thing, and then also like you know how do I actually go about this? Like what are the best practices? You know, so there's two sides of it. Yeah, there's a lot I, to I, talk about with that particular subject. Or, or you could just watch people who are really good streamers, people who are energetic and exciting to watch, and who are funny. Briar is, I don't watch a lot of streamers. I probably watched 10 in my entire life. But Briar has this thing where he's just so funny and he gets into that chat and talks to people. You feel like you're a part of this situation, this game that he's playing. You know, you might tell him to do something. He'll actually try it. So watch, you know, watch someone who you're comfortable watching stream, someone who's funny and, and learn some of their, their habits and, and maybe pick that up as you move forward as well. Because I'm going to be the Black Briar. I just got to get my goatee right. I feel like I'm a white person. So, I mean, it should be an easy transition. <laughs> Damn. You guys got it going on. But Blade Runner also had um, an answer to our Desert Island gaming uh, okay. genie in a bottle question. So, okay, let's hear it. Uh, Blade Runner says, so if our genie is kind enough to let us play any series, meaning a game and its sequels, my FPS game would be Destiny. Single player game would be Batman Arkham. Because it wouldn't get old beating, uh, being Batman and beating up thugs. Just give the collection. That's yeah, a good there you go. Time. There you go. And the third game would be some sort of MMO, maybe WoW or Elder Scrolls Online. But uh, Blade Runner would also be interested in a space sci-fi MMO. Maybe, mm-hmm. uh, what's that one coming out? StarCraft? Yep. Not StarCraft. Starcraft. Isn't that the one that's coming out? StarCraft. Like, oh. Yeah, no, there's... That's, a, that's a space MMO. Oh, yeah, but is that already out? Starcraft. Is that... Starcraft is not a space MMO. No, that, that's no, not Starcraft. There's there's a game coming out that is supposed to be like an open, true open world like space type game, and it's supposed. To, I can't remember what the hell the name. Maybe Chad will know what I'm talking about. I think about, I but have it's supposed... it installed. Hold on, give me a second to look through my uh... Star Citizen. Star Citizen. Yeah. Mm, okay. Thank okay, you. Yeah. That game is That'd goddamn game crazy. <laughs> right That'd now, there's game. all these different modules you can. You can fly a ship, you can explore a base, you can go fly to planets, you can play like a first-person shooter, but it hasn't really been meshed together yet. So uh, they're still working on it. They've been working on it for years. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mm -hmm. it's a crazy-ass game. It's worth at least checking it out. And that's all we got for feedback, guys. So as always, we appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And your topic suggestions and feedback. Questions of the week. All that stuff goes to revolvergamescast at gmail.com. So during the show, if you have any great ideas, make sure you share them, and you'll be on episode six of Revolver Live. All right, so let's start revolving, guys, or evolving, I should say. Briar, would you like to get us started with our topics? Yeah, let me bring up the uh, topic. Let's give me a second here. All right, so uh, one of the things that I was really actually looking forward to is talking about the games that we're looking forward to for the rest of the year. So in 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 the uh, topic list, I put a link to basically the video game release dates for the rest of the year, um, and I'm, I'll start. Obviously, Destiny Two is high on my list, uh, probably number one on my list. But the new Metroid game for the 3DS is also right up there. Uh, mm. I don't know if you've guys seen this. This was kind of a surprise announcement. E3. We've also seen some gameplay of it, and basically, it looks like a 2D version of Metroid, 
um, updated for you know kind of the 3DS. Uh, it's basically it's based off of Metroid 2 for the Game Boy. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to this one. This one is second on my list easily to to Destiny 2, but it's it's by far far and away higher than anything else on my list. Wow. I so have those... seen it, and I'm pretty excited about it because it kind of reminded me of uh, Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo, just like yeah. the side-scrolling aspect yeah, of it. I love sure. the throwback. Super Metroid for Super Nintendo was my favorite. It's a really good game. I love that side, side-scrolling side view of the Metroid world of exploration, finding items, having to backtrack once you do find the correct item to be like, Okay, so I can latch onto this and rope across the ceiling. Castlevania where else, style. Where else did yeah. I? Yeah, yeah, Metroidvania. Where else yeah. did I see that thing where I can latch onto? Oh yeah, I saw it at, like one of the first rooms that I went in, went into. Mm-hmm. It's like and you know, hearing you talk Metroid. about that. That's something that completely went over my head, prior. Yeah, I saw it at E3, and, and I'm a huge fan of Metroidvania-style games, side-scrollers where you, you play through certain areas, you get something that you need to advance to an area you couldn't before, and Metroid is one of those games in spades. So that's definitely up there. I don't know if it'd be in my top three, but you specifically asked for three, and I think you only named two, Briar, to be totally honest. I only honest. named two? Yeah, I am really yeah. – you know what I like about those kind of games, too, is that you can – since it is on the, on the uh, DS, is that I can just – Set it next to the couch and just kind of play it at my own leisure. You know, I, that could be a month. That could be a game that takes me months to finish, just because mm-hmm. I play it in little bite-sized chunks on the 3DS. So a lot of people were upset that we didn't get to see the new console-based Metroid, but I was really excited to see a 2D Metroid. Like really excited. Yeah, uh, but the third me- game. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Brian. The third game on my list has got to be Wolfenstein 2: The New Colossus. Um, I really enjoyed. Wolfenstein or Wolfenstein the New Order. Like I thought it was a fantastic game and actually I just finished my playthrough of it on the PC and it was really fun to play through again. The trailer for the New Colossus though was absolutely batshit crazy. And I cannot wait to play this game. It really like I really find enjoyment in these single player experiences uh, that just kind of go a little bit out on a limb and I think that they experimented that with that in the New Order, and they're going much farther with it in the New Colossus. And you know, we got some returning characters, we got new characters, we got that same you know Wolfenstein gameplay that we we enjoyed in uh, the New Order. I'm really looking forward to this game. Yeah, I, I played less of Wolfenstein than I can admit. I really, uh, to me, it looked great, it looked fun. But my top three, my personal opinion, of course. Uh, Destiny 2 is, is really high on my my, my, my order. Uh, I've enjoyed playing it uh, with you guys. I had a hell of a good time playing the campaign here with my wife. It, it just seems like it offers so much more than, than I guess you get out of any other first-person shooter, especially today. And I'm, I'm really excited to see what they bring forward with that game. So that's definitely one of my top three. Uh, another game is a first-person shooter that I'm amped for. And I didn't think I would be because recently over the last few years, I haven't really been that excited for these games. But Call of Duty World War II, Mm -hmm. Uh, to me, that it looks like it's going to be exciting. It looks like that thing that we used to have years ago is back and it looks visceral. and It looks like it's just carnage and chaos everywhere. And you drop in the middle of a place that's a tangible reality, something that happened a long time ago to real people. And to me, that's really exciting. And of course, I'm always rooting for Call of Duty to come back, you know. For them to come back and, and 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 bring the people who grew up with them back over to that side, with all I'm, this, you know, go ahead. I'm real curious about this game because you know I used to be a huge Call of Duty fan, and the last few games really turned me off. But this does look like it's going to be a return to at least multiplayer wise to what I used to love about Call of Duty. But my question is, is less about Call of Duty, more about my personal preference of games. Has has my my preference changed so much it has. in games that playing just a a Call of Duty style multiplayer experience is that going to be satisfying anymore? And my suspicion is it's not. Yeah, you know that's that reality I think we've come to over the last couple of years, Briar. Uh, the way that first person shooters are played now, if you go back five or six years, that style of gameplay seems so dated. It does, you know. There's there's double jumps and wall runs and, and sliding and all these things that exist now that people are so used to. So for me, uh, it's not about the it's not about the movement mechanics, right? It's about the the interaction with other players. It's about 
Uh, being able to have one cohesive character move back and forth between single player and multiplayer, multiplayer. and like, you know, gaining loot and, you know, there's just so much more to, you know, I've been playing Destiny for three years since I stopped playing Call of Duty. And to go back to a multiplayer experience where you just, you prestige rank up and you get new weapons as you go. And then, you know, eventually you hit the prestige max and you, you re-prestige and lose all your progress, but, you know, get prestige rank two. You know, mm -hmm. and you, you you play in matches with your friends or in solo matches, but you don't actually have any real progression. And, you know, it's just what Destiny has brought to the table has raised my expectation for... To change things, yeah? Yeah, it's just changed things. And I, I just yeah. don't know if I'll be able to go back to, you know, a, a multiplayer first-person shooter that just doesn't have that kind of stuff. It, it feels like to me that... Uh, first person shooters that are coming out have to adopt some of the things that destiny's done. You know, you can't come out with the same old style of the way that things were done years ago. If, when you look at the climate and you look at the way that people have gravitated toward destiny and stayed on that boat for years, I think it's almost impossible for developers to just go with the old school form. I think that destiny has to be incorporated into more games for them to have that degree of sus sustained uh, success of destiny scene. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some aspects of what destiny is, you know, Call of Duty's been trying that for the last couple of games where you can go into uh, uh, co-op mode and play through the campaign with your friends. Uh, so they've been trying to implement some aspects of that. And uh, I, who knows how far they'll go with, with World War II. But like I said, it's something that I'm kind of excited to see and see how far they can bring people back. And Wilson, you were saying something about this too. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that I every year that a new Call of Duty comes out, I'm like, I'm not buying it. I'm not falling prey to it again. <laughs> and I end up doing it anyway, and the same outcome happens. I play it for a month, maybe two. Um, I did, however, enjoy modern or Call of Duty 4 Remastered. That was fun oh. because it was a throwback to one of my favorites. Um, but then they throw World War II at me. And I love anything World War II related. Uh, me and Briar talk about one of our favorite shows all the time, Band of Brothers, mm. which um, follows the 101st Airborne uh, through their journey through uh, Europe and, you know, some of the battles and stuff that they had to fight. I think it would be cool if they would have went, like, that sort of a route with it. Mm. Like, told, a story, you know, man. like the Battle of Bastogne or Carentan or, you know, any of these places where a lot of these big... Um, game-breaking moments happened in this war that like it helped us advance more more um more ground into germany i'd like to see them do almost kind of like call of duty world war ii but i want to go to actual places actual battles i want some sort of um link to reality with it and then with campaign i would like it to be four i want four players in there i want to be yeah. able to play it with three other friends and you know be in our foxholes and in, in the bastone forest or something while you know, the German infantry is mowing over, you know, I want that experience with them. And I agree with Briar. I feel like Destiny or not even necessarily Destiny, but just a lot of multiplayer games nowadays where you can get so immersed with your friends. I feel like the Call of Duty campaign could use that. And granted, once you play it once, I mean, you're rarely going to go back and play the campaign again. But for online, I feel like that whole system of what you were saying about you know at this level you're getting that gun and this one, and at this level you prestige and lose everything. I feel like they're just really afraid to change that up, man. And I feel like they need to. Um, I don't know if they need to make things like more random, or I don't really know what the remedy is, but something about it, the progression system in Call of Duty is very stale to me. It, it was it was amazing <clears throat> and brand new when they first when they first did it in in uh, Modern Warfare. And then they improved on it in Modern Warfare 2, but it's it is pretty stale at this point, right? It's, they've done yeah. it in what ten games now, at least ten. So, um, and that's just my personal opinion. There's a lot of people out there who love it, who don't want that progression system to change. I mean, like you said, they've done it for ten games. Every game that you keep doing this again, it's going to make it harder and harder to change that in the future because people have just become so accustomed to it, you know. But I'll probably end up buying it because I said I won't get it. <laughs> You know how they always pull you in, man. It's like <laughs> yeah, going to no Walmart doubt. for one thing and you walk out with a cart. Um, and so the last game on my list is for the console that I probably spend the least amount of time with, my Nintendo Switch. Just so lovely. Uh, and that game is Super Mario Odyssey. 
Super Mario Odyssey to me has been something that I've been dreaming of for the last 20 years. Uh, Mario 64 was one of my favorite games of all time, and it still holds up today. The way that the game was crafted, the puzzles, the control, the movement, the way the game looked, it just meant so much in a time where there was literally nothing like it on Earth. And since Mario 64 has come out, come and gone, we haven't had anything really like it. Um, we've had some Mario 3D games, which had a different style, a different mechanic, and a different feel overall compared to the Mario 64 games. And so seeing Mario Odyssey, seeing it in action, seeing the way the game looks, the way that the worlds are crafted, the way that Mario moves, it's very reminiscent to Mario of old, Mario 64. And so with Nintendo's magic, uh, and the way that they put so much pedigree and time and, and, and care into their, their projects, especially their first-party stuff, I think Mario Odyssey is going to be game of the year. I think it's going to be one of the best experiences I'm going to have all year. And um, I'm super-duper excited to probably put hundreds of hours on my console, finally, by having a game like Mario Odyssey that I can play at home on a 60-inch or take on the go or you know be at work on my break time playing it. I think it's going to be just a great experience, and I can't wait to play that game. Still no word on a Vita release, though, right? No. <laughs> you know, we, Gary, Gary can hope. Gary can pray. <laughs> Still no word on that fucking Vita release. I'm actually, that's going to probably be around the time that I finally buy a Switch is when that game comes out because it seems like currently the only game that I'd want to play on the Switch is Breath of the Wild. Um, and then when I get done with that game, I'm going to want something else to play on my Switch. So I think there'll be two, probably Scoop Mario Kart, Breath of the Wild, and Mario when it comes out. And I think that'll that's satiate. That's a good launch lineup like the, right there. It really is, and I haven't I haven't gotten a switch yet, so I'll be going into all these games fresh. So that'll be really cool in between little little D two lulls. God damn, well, mm -hmm. you say that, and it it makes me think going into Christmas time, the Switch has got a strong ass lineup. You got so a really new does. Mario game, a new Zelda game, you got Mario Kart, you got a couple of other titles on there that aren't too bad. Splatoon is doing very nicely, uh, and people are very excited about it. That actually going into the Christmas season. I could see the Switch actually selling some numbers. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Nintendo's going to have a hell of a Christmas between the Switch and between that Super Nintendo Mini. I think Nintendo is going to clean up this year. That yeah. Super Nintendo Mini is going to sell out. I'm waiting for it. It's going to be in the next couple of days, so you guys keep your eyes open. But what about all that competition coming from the Xbox One X? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I can call he it He just that. laughs at it. He just laughs at it. Get the hell out it's of a here. legitimate contender. <laughs> I don't know if it is, honestly. Um, for me, I'll probably end up getting it, right? My wife is like, why? You know, I, I got the reasonable wife who's like, why Why do you want this thing? Yeah. You don't play your Xbox now. There's like three games on it that you even like. Why right. are you going to spend 500 bucks? I'm like, because I need to. And she's like, shut the fuck up. And, and I understand it. Hi, hi, babe. I know you're watching. <laughs> uh, so I'll probably buy it because I'm a nerd and it's just what I do. But as far as fun factor goes, there's really not much on it that's going to get me excited. The game that everybody was touting for just got delayed to 2018 Crackdown. Crackdown 3. Yeah, so it's like that's not going to be a big contender for me. Well, so I'm gonna maybe wait. this I'm gonna will change your mind because one of the games on my list that I'm excited for is PUBG on X-Bone. Oh, shit. You just fucked me all up. That is Damn. a good one, Wilson. That's actually yeah, but, a really yeah, but that's good still, one. <laughs> that's still on the Xbox One, though. So it's you don't it's need the Xbox true. One X for you, it. If you, yeah, maybe if you want it to, to look and feel as best that's as you great possibly can. It. Give you that competitive edge when you're third-personing people around the corner. You can only get away with this conversation <laughs> because Gary's not here. If Gary was here, he'd be shitting all over you right now. Somebody's. How many megahertz is on that Xbox there? How many? Gary's, Gary's not here. He's too busy playing with his Yobo in Florida. Yep. Yeah. Yobo. Yeah. Um, it's, his, it's his true so, favorite handheld console. So for me, right, I'm going to buy it first on my, my Xbox. I'm going to play that. And while I'm gearing up for my Xbox One X, I will. she's watching right now. I'm going to gift my original Xbox VCR to my wife so she can play uh, PUBG with me finally. So. Nice. That's how we're going to do that. I'm really excited for it to come to Expo because I got a lot of friends who either can't afford or just don't want to build a PC. Mm -hmm. They've That's got their deal. friends. They've got their friends on a console. They're very comfortable where they're at, and I understand a that PC is scary as hell. So I got a lot of friends that I want to play some PUBG with. So that's what I'm pretty excited about. Um, 
Another game on that list is uh, South Park Fractured Butthole. Oh, <laughs> shit. Did you guys get to play the Stick of Truth when it yeah, came out? No, I haven't played it yeah. yet. I have it downloaded it it. on my PC, and it's going to be one of the... I think I'll pro probably play it on stream this week. You better You're play that, it, Brian. Brian. Oh, You're going to laugh your ass off, dude, because like they're... The South Park episode. You don't have to be a diehard, have seen every single episode to get the jokes in this game, because they do kind of throw back to certain episodes, but it's all the good ones that you've heard made fun of or overplayed like a million times, you know what I mean? So Fractured Butthole looks amazing because just the way that they told the story, like you're the new kid coming into town and you have all these powers or whatever and you're the chosen one and all this stuff. And in this one, in classic sequel fashion, you lose all your powers. You lose everything right at the start. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it's going to be a different type of game that they're playing or pretending to play. You know what I mean? Because it basically is out of the imagination of all the kids God damn or whatever. That's, a, that's a, such a good pick. It really is. And <laughs> that the is RPG, a great pick. RPG uh, elements in that game are fucking solid, yeah. dude. Like the turn-based action of it, the summons you can get, the magic attacks, timing um, your physical attacks so that you can get a crit. Certain things like that, so I'm really excited to see what the sequel is going to bring. Truth, to that. I, I want to say we played that in 2012 or 13. Can't it's, been, remember, man. it's been it's been a few years, but uh, it was a phenomenal RPG, Briar. And even back then on the PS3, it looked exactly like a South Park episode. I mean, graphically, the way that the characters move, the voice acting, it was like watching one of the best South Park episodes ever. And actually being a part of it, it's really better movie. that game up. It was yeah. on sale on Steam during the last Steam sale, so I picked it up. I just haven't gotten around to playing it yet. So you should stream I'll probably that, play it. Right? Yeah, I'll stream it this week. I'll stream it. This it's week. super casual, like stream friendly in a sense that like you could totally stop what you're doing and talk to the chat for a second. You don't feel like there's any moment that like you have to that you can't look away from the monitor. You know what I mean? So it's super chill. I think it'd be fun. You'll like it. You're going to be laughing your ass off the entire time. What a great time. choice, funny Wilson. Shit. That came out of nowhere. That was a hell of a choice, man. And then, of course, no, I hate to be cliche and jump on the bandwagon here, but motherfucking D2. D2. Who isn't excited for that? Like, <laughs> Nobody's not excited for that. Wait. Nah. Yeah. I'm nobody, lying. Yeah, not nobody. excited. <laughs> I just put it on my list because I wanted to be like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those are the games I'm looking forward to. It's going to be so lit. It, it, well, they said stop saying lit in the. In That's the, why I said it. Oh well, it's definitely going to be lit. We'll this year's going to be on fire. Yeah, fuego, <laughs> fuego, <laughs> and fuego. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many games coming out. It's going to be. I honestly think that this is going to be like one of those highlight years for video games. That's going to be, you know, like that you go back and remember, like, oh my god, there were so many games. Like if you look at the games that have already come out this year, Resident Evil, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Zelda, uh, you know, there's just so many, like too many that I can really count really and that I can remember. But like coming just up to this point, and we're not even in September yet. Like the real <clears throat> releases start now. Madden's, you know, Madden's that like kind of cutoff point when all of a sudden the holiday releases start. It's going to be huge. September Wait. has so many games in it, you know. Quick question. I, I'm looking at the list, and it's like there's so many that I don't, I can't possibly run through them all. You know, like it would take it would take the next 15 minutes. <laughs> like when I was compiling my list for this topic, a game that was on the list didn't get mentioned because you you said three, but there are people in the comment section on Twitch asking, and yeah. I'm super excited about this game because what everything they got wrong with the first one seems to be fixed. Are you guys excited at all for Star Wars Battlefront Two? I'll be excited when I see that game in a playable state, and that you know, and it looks. It looks like it's gonna have content in it because gotcha. I'm like you, basically. We played, we played the beta of Battlefront One together, and I was having a ball. You sure were. And then the game <laughs> came out, and it was like, wait a minute, this is all the stuff that was that's in the beta. <laughs> wait a minute, this shit just happened with Destiny. What the hell? What is this? <laughs> I all... want, I want some PVE, man. Yeah, that's what I want. I want a legit storyline to where, like, if I don't it have friends like online, one. Th that I can go in and just get completely lost. And it yeah. looks like they, they have that, and that's what I think I any it. Star Wars game should have first and foremost, because Star Wars is based on lore. That's what people love. They love the lore, the the characters in the worlds. And if you, if you make a Star Wars game where it's just a bunch of people doing PvP, 
you lose what makes Star Wars special, and it looks like at least now and the PvP uh, built... wasn't particularly deep. Like, yeah, it, it wasn't deep it at didn't all. Hold no. people for a long time. It looked fantastic. fantastic. It sounded fantastic. Sounded. Yeah. Amazing. The TIE Fighters. Oh, my God. I'm getting chills just thinking about it with the head. Wasn't it like 40-player matches in that, too? <clears throat> it was like 80. It was 40 v 40, I think. Yeah. That was insane. It was, it was huge. But, like, that's why I think, like, Shadows of the Empire for Nintendo 64 was one of the best Star Wars games there is because it had dank storyline, dude. So like, really fun. good. Like, uh, granted, you were playing a, a wannabe Han Solo Dash Randar, but, I mean, that's... <laughs> It's neither here nor there, but like the story so was now. was really good. I know, right? The story yeah. was really good, and that's that's kind of what I want is like a modern Shadows of the Empire where there's exploration, things to do, there's collectibles, bonus objectives, and stuff like that. I think that's where they could really make some money is so, off single player. In a theoretical world, I can't wait to play all these games, but unfortunately, Destiny Two is coming out on September sixth. <laughs> So in about three years, when I'm good and sick of Destiny 2, <laughs> you can get back to your back My catalog. Backlog right? just got smaller, right? and then now Destiny 2, I'm gonna start getting back yep. up again. It'd be like 12 right. games I haven't played. I think in the last three years, Brian has probably bought a, a max of what 10 games besides Destiny, bro. Oh, I mean, I bought more than that. I just don't play them. You don't play them at all. I mean, yeah, it is what it is, bro. We have our loves, we have our passions, and no one yeah. can take that away from us, man. I feel like there's a good transition over to Wilson's first topic, though. Actually, you didn't do your second topic. Do you want to do Wilson's first? Okay. uh, We'll do the uh, first one. So, speaking of all this D2 nonsense, what the hell are you guys doing to buy the time till D2? What are you guys doing? What are you playing? Uh, I've been kind of doing what we just talked about. It's trying to, like, get through that back catalog. All those games that I kind of just passed on uh, while I was playing Destiny 2, but also... Some of the games that just came out recently, Hellblade, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. I've absolutely adored that game. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get my chance to play Warframe because everybody just is telling me all these great things about Warframe. We should play that together. I actually booted up The Witcher 3 again like a couple of days ago. <laughs> what? And my my time in Witcher 3 is at like 90 something hours already, and I haven't even I haven't even <laughs> really started the second DLC yet. <laughs> So there, there's so much content to that game, man. I know, right? Like it's a smorgasbord. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet of quests. Um, you I, know, I me and Wilson play have played a little bit of Fortnite together. PUBG has been huge. Like, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm getting over PUBG at this point. I think. Really? Like, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not calling my name on a daily basis like it was earlier in the summer. Um, I still enjoy it when I play it, but it's not like I'm not, I'm not obsessively playing it like I was. Can I give you a theory to that? Yeah. I feel like, you know, Destiny, Destiny's your main chick. You know what I mean? She's your ride or die girl. You know Uh what I mean? She went out of town for a little bit. Yeah. And PUBG started calling you and you were hanging out. PUBG was my side piece. (laughs) PUBG was your side piece while Destiny was away. And she's on the way back. back. Brian said, my my baby's on the plane. You got to kick PUBG out. She's got to go. Hey, man. That, Get her out of here. That's probably true. Now, now, for me, I've been playing a lot less games uh, than I would like to admit. Uh, I've recently been playing Hellblade. I bought that last week after we got done with the show. And uh, I think Friday I started it. And uh, I put probably about four to five hours in. And Kate was in here playing it today. One of the best game experiences I've had of the year. We talked about this pre-show. And you guys hit on it a lot last week before I had a chance to play it. But it's a very unique experience. It's, it's unlike any game I've ever played. Uh, I can't wait shines... till you finish it because your opinion on it after you finish it, I feel like it changes your really? whole experience. Yeah, I really do. Now, like the... I, I was playing The Last of Us, and that is my my love. That's my number one chick, my ride sure. or die bitch. It's mm-hmm. The Last of Us. You know, she it's been goes a long to the time. She, she's been around. <laughs> yeah, well, for, for for me, she's always been here. You know, she goes against my purple drink. Comes back with my dill pickles. She's a ride or die. But um, I was playing that earlier today, and Kate was in, the, in here in the studio playing Hellblade, and she came running around the corner. She said, you got to you gotta get back in here and play this game. And I was, she said, this game is fucking awesome. She hadn't beat it either. But she she's probably an hour or so ahead of me now. It, it shines a light on ailments and issues that people have now that in a way that you really have no, no grasp of mentally. And it puts right. you in that position. And from the very beginning... 
then it's a narrative driven game, but the narrative is coming from you in a very unsettling way. And it draws you into this character and it makes you experience things in a very terrifying way. Uh, Kate did say that Gary Diaz is a little bitch for calling this game a horror game because she said she didn't see any horror in it yet. But mm. we still love you, Gary. I'm going to uh, go ahead and agree with Kate. Yeah. There's uh, no horror there. Not actually based on how much horror is in it. Just on a general level. Yeah, Gary, it, you little bitch. And it doesn't really <laughs> matter what I think because there's still more votes. So, yeah, it's <laughs> <bitch> confirmed. <laughs> bitch confirmed. Love you, and Gary. So, yeah, I, 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 did, I did buy and play Fortnite with you guys, or I tried to anyway, but you guys were on PC. I was playing on PS4 and tried to get through that and, and experience it a little bit. I'm going to definitely put more time into that game. I think I just went through the initial setup. I love what they're doing with that game. It kind of marries everything that I love. And for me, that's what I'm doing until Destiny 2 comes out. When Destiny 2 comes out, I think I want to set everything aside. i talk to you guys uh, during the beta. I think I want to put a year into this game. Yeah. I, yes, I, I hope me. so, Beastly, because I would love to... I'd love to have you on my fire team all year, you yeah. know, like, and I'd love to have you on my raid team and play in PVP and, you know, you're a fun person to be around. You're a fun person to play with. So it'd be awesome if you were, if you're in there in, in uh destiny too. Revolver's down, going man. flawless, baby. That's all I'm saying. When the first trials of Osiris comes out, we're going flawless. Hand cannons, revolvers, baby. We're doing it live. Revolver too. live. Yeah. Revolver goes flawless. It would only live. be better if we had Bill O'Reilly here to say it. Or we're going to do it live. <laughs> Okay. Or worse, life. or much, much worse. <laughs> much worse. <laughs> but much, much worse, right? Now, uh, I, I didn't, uh, I don't recall, but uh, Wilson, what did you say that you were playing to hold you over until Destiny? Oh, man. Well, you know, we had touch bases on Fortnite, uh, Warframe. I've actually been going back to uh, Borderlands 2, cleaning up on some of that uh, legendary grinding. There's some legendary, there's a lot of legendaries I don't have in that game, but. Um, Specific bosses drop specific weapons, and it's very, very in depth where you get your stuff. So me and some friends have been going back and doing that. Just bought it a couple days ago uh, on, on PlayStation. Uh, yeah. The PlayStation? collection, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's play. We played, yeah, we we played part one, Kate and I. Uh, that was years ago in Ohio, and we fell in love with that game. It was unlike anything we ever played, and I saw it on sale, and I was trying to decide if I was going to get a VR game or get the Borderlands uh, Handsome Collection. And she said, I don't want any more VR. Just go get the collection. So we played probably the first hour. Or so it Good is woman. all of you. Yeah, yeah. She Good woman. She knows VR. what's up. She knows what's and, up. And so, yeah, we'll definitely jump on there with you, Wilson. So Absolutely, you man. It'll be a good time. Um, my lady's got it as well, and I got some good friends that got it. Uh, PUBG. Uh, for my competitive shooter fix, man, I've been turning into a little – getting back into Overwatch, man. Ooh. Like, I, Hansa was love. Hansa was Let's life. Go. I got to get in there, man. I got to get my, go. my, dank, my dank bows. <laughs> and stuff like that uh i've also been you know handling you know some in real life stuff i got a uh a trade show for glass that i'm getting ready for next month so this is going to be a really busy month for me uh next month is actually going to be busier so getting ready for that trade show so i've been doing a lot of preparation for that um did you make that piece behind you that's that spiral there this um, one uh no but my old uh studio owner actually actually made that so that's uh, wilson that wilson just sent me something for my daughters guys definitely check him out on twitter the guy's incredibly talented for me as a person who only creates things in my mind to see somebody create the kind of shit that this guy does his craftsmanship is just unreal definitely check him out guys oh you're flattering me that's but, true uh, but uh, another thing that I've been kind of like getting into is preparing my gaming setup for the release of D2, whether that be hardware upgrades like my actual computer, uh, controller upgrade, monitors, keyboard, mice, mouse, mice, what do you et cetera. Think you know? what, do you, what do you got going on here? I'm, well, I gotta, before I get a monitor, I mean, there's no way that I can't talk to you or Gary about it first. So monitor is unknown for keyboard and mouse and stuff like that i really want to get that destiny 2 razor set man yeah yeah that's pretty nice it's right? it's so awesome like granted i do have a pair of a40s that are hooked into my pc and my playstation simultaneously mm -hmm. but it would be good to have something that is on my xbox so if i do want to turn it on i don't have to switch anything over i don't have to get into the back and feel around to plug shit in and so that's probably where i'll use the uh the headset for but I need a new mouse. Um, keyboard, probably not, but why not? Fuck it. You know, we're in the spirit of upgrading and stuff like that. So I, the mouse pad, it just everything with the Destiny 2 logo looks so awesome on it, it man. Does. Like, I, 
The mouse pad is actually like legit cool looking. Mm-hmm. It is. I almost don't want to use it. I almost don't want to get my grimy, sweaty game hands on it. But right, we're gonna buy ten of them, so I always have a nice fresh one for the rest of my mine's life. Mine's looking so haggard right now. I need a new <laughs> one anyway. But <laughs> I need to like throw mine in the washing machine or something. It's getting kind of haggard. Um, but you know, some other things you can do, like some some in real life stuff, man. Go outside, take the dog for a walk. Ryder just cleaned his garage. My you know what I mean? Like. I'm in the midst I've, of cleaning my garage. This is a multi-weekend problem. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you got to get out there and get some sun. And you know, because I, I feel a serious lack of vitamin D being replaced by vitamin D two when it comes out. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> well, I, I make sure that the only person in my house that, that gets their vitamin D is my wife. Oh, uh, so this is the thing, right? <laughs> I'm guessing after Wilson did his topic, you guys would like to hear one of mine. Will we are we going to revolve that way? This way. Sure. Yeah. I, I did want to. I wanted to mention though. Uh, the reason I am cleaning the garage is to move my gaming setup into the garage, and one of the reasons this is so appealing for me is because in those on those nice days, you know, those nice seventy degree days, how cool would it be to just open up that garage? <laughs> how cool would that be? And the office, it's almost like having a convertible office, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. You feel me? You but- feel me? It's like a green screen, cool. you can just have the, the good old outdoors behind right? you. you know what oh, I mean? yeah. <laughs> That's what we should do. You should do it anyway with a green screen, and then we could put different settings behind you, like a desert <laughs> and like a rainforest, <laughs> the Himalayans. <laughs> I would never a miss a package yard. again when I'm streaming either. So <laughs> I'd be like, hey, FedEx guy. <laughs> Is it a is it a much is it a much bigger area that you're gonna be moving into? And... Yeah, the, like compared to my office, it's probably I don't know, almost three times the size of my office. It's a two car garage, right? It's a standard two oh, car okay. garage, right? So, thing is, it's filled up with shit like garages get filled up with, you know. <laughs> so I gotta clean it all out. I'm cleaning all this stuff out of it. Then I'm gonna clean the floor because it's a cement floor, and then I'm I think I'm gonna put that like it's some kind of like plastic sealant. You know that it comes out looking like uh, it's you know like a floor, like a. Got you. You know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. And then yeah. uh, you know it's already sheetrocked and insulated, so I'm gonna add a couple of heaters in there, put an air conditioner in there in the summer. We good to go. Hell yeah, Briar, get the Cable hooked it. up out there so you can be hardwired into your to your yep. internet and stuff like. Nice, yep. my man. Yep. You, That's you know exciting. Cat five, you can't be on no Wi-Fi. That'd be. Now, now before <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> but Basically. before before I get to my topic, I want to tell you guys something that I talked about at work and, and everybody thought I was a genius. Okay. Now a lot of people out there know that I'm in an interracial marriage. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of heat in the United States right now about the past Confederate Wait, statues Kate's and black? whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't tell by her voice. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, but, but they're removing these statues, and there's a lot of talk of race wars in the future. And I told everybody at work that I have a an ironclad plan to avoid any issues with a race war. Uh-huh. So I live in the, in the South, not the deep South, but I live in Georgia. And if the day comes where there's a Klan convention outside my house, yeah, I told everybody at work, I'm going to have my wife open the door and wave. And then she can close the door and come back and play the game with me. And then when the black lives matter comes the other way, I'll go ah. to the door, give them the peace sign mm. or black, black power. You know, I'll put on a little muscle. Got all Muslim your bases hackle. covered. Awesome, Slam like the it, door you know? and then we'll come back to play in Borderlands too. And that's how you, <laughs> you you cover your ass in any kind of race war. Get you a white woman, black man, black man, white woman, white man, black woman. Save your ass. All right. So I wanted to, uh, and that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly my plan when I married my wife. All right. So Just my prepping topic. Prepping for the race war. <laughs> prepping for the You're race, a race war. Race yes. war prepper. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Ten years ago, when I first met Kate, I said, "Do you know what's you know. coming?" She said, "I sure do." I said, "Let's go." <laughs> All right. So there's a lot of shit going on right now with the world of YouTube. And I thought it was just me, but I went on YouTube yesterday and everybody I know has been talking about this. Uh, it's really, really huge in the world of YouTube and people are calling it the YouTube ad apocalypse. Uh, YouTube has stricken many channels with a quote, not suitable for all advertisers status, which has made many channels, including mine, unable to receive any ad revenue for many of their videos. Uh, usually these type of blanket changes have affected have affected me and those I know in minute ways, but it's really stricken home now with over 50% of my videos. My videos, I'm not the most vulgar guy in the world, usually, including my game reviews, 
uh, having this status. So as a content creator, I'm honestly looking at new ways to share my creations. And I ask you all, what is the future for YouTube, firstly? And are there any other tangible competitors to this streaming giant? Because right now, I want to just say hashtag fuck Google. Because they're screwing good people who've done a lot of work. And, and now that work seems to be null and void. And it's taken years to compile a lot of this work, Briar. You know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. And for them to, and for them to just, I mean, I'm talking my daughter's videos of her talking about you know, uh, her tablet, not suitable for all, uh, you know, ads. What the hell is going on here? And I'm, I'm a little upset. So what do you guys think? You got every any... right to be upset, Beasley. This is fucking ridiculous. Um, and this is only like the latest step in YouTube's fuckery over the last nine months, really. Um, the fact that, so here's how it works, right? Is there's an algorithm that's running right now on YouTube and it's going through content creators channels and it is doing exactly what it did to you, Beastly. Uh, it's going through those channels, and if it can find anything to tag as inappropriate for advertisers, it does exactly that. Tags it as inappropriate, and the, the video is no longer monetized. And uh, there is an appeal process, I but, did. Takes forever. but if you do appeal it, that video has to get 1,000 views after you appeal it, I think like it, is it a thousand views a day or a thousand views a week? What? To for the appeal to even be considered. So if you're looking at a video that's let's say three months old and maybe it's not a super popular video anymore, but every once in a while, you know, it gets views. Let's say it gets a hundred views a week or it gets you know hundred views a day. Maybe it was a product review you did a little bit ago. Well, if you've got a hundred of those on your channel. That equates to a little bit of money per month, right? It's not, mm -hmm. you know, you're not swimming in dough, but those kind of videos help keep you afloat, right? They help keep you going. If a video like that gets demonetized, you're basically never going to get monetized again. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, if it is something like, you know, your daughter doing a tablet review and it's only getting, let's say, five views of a day, you're never getting that remonetize because it's never going to hit that thousand view mark so you're fucked right you're absolutely fucked and there's no goddamn reason for it to have gotten demonetized in the first place they're using keywords they're using keywords in the titles they're using keywords in the in the tags um they seem to have some kind of speech to text recognition that seems to also malfunction so you know if that text to speech like if it reads something in the youtube video you know, that you said or your daughter said, and it misinterprets that to be something that's in that flag list. Wow. Then that can like that. So <clears throat> there's a lot of YouTubers going out there and they're like every title they have, they're, they're replacing the word weapon, gun, like anything like that. They're going through all their tags. They're doing the same thing. They're going, you know, there's, I, I'm not aware of any specific list out there that YouTube has put out either that says here is exactly what is getting restricted. Flagged, yeah. Right? Which is bullshit because, you know, if we knew, we could work around it, but we don't know. You made the change. Once again, you didn't communicate you were making that change until after you made it, so you fucked us up again. Fuck you, okay? Fuck you, YouTube. Like, you've, you've continued to do this. Every time I upload a video, you subtract subscribers from my YouTube channel. You are now demonetizing videos for no apparent reason, right? No reason. You you are not communicative in any sort of way. I'm I'm fucking done with you, YouTube. Like I am fucking done. Beasley, you mentioned that you were going to start uploading videos to. Vimeo. I already did. Vid me. Yeah. Vid me. Vid me. Very communicative. Very small site at this point. But hey, you know, if enough content creators go there, the viewership will follow them. I'm also going to start uploading all my videos to Twitch. You know what? Like, Twitch has been an awesome platform since I've joined Twitch. It's been amazing. Every time I hear communication from Twitch, I'm like, that's fucking cool. Thank you, Twitch. As opposed to from YouTube, I'm like, fuck. fuck you. <laughs> you know, like, I'm so sick of it from YouTube. Over and over again, they have no goddamn respect for their creators. And the only way we're going to get it to change is if we fucking leave. Yeah, I mean, to be totally honest, bro, you're right. Uh, yesterday, I, I spent about an hour in here contacting YouTube, trying to figure out what's going on. Why are my reviews of, like, Little Nightmares and uh, some of my other video game reviews, Odin Spear, flagged? 
uh, why is my daughter's video flagged? Why are just videos of me playing a video game with no no words like The Last of Us? Why is that flagged? I have over 800 videos flagged, bro. 800. If, if, did you get a hold of anyone? Did no. you did you actually I'm talk to No, because no, you no. have to you have to have a certain amount of subscribers to actually get a hold of someone, don't you? Like no, I, well, I thought I mean, that they I, actually I, had they, like a contacted line. Contacted me before, and if they did contact me, I haven't checked. They may have, uh, you know, since I've contacted them. But I'm like, I have 1,600 videos. You flag 800 of them? Are you serious? I mean, and I'm not a vulgar guy. I don't talk about topics that are just out there. I talk about video games, video game news, and just little funny things that are happening to me throughout life. What what has happened with with YouTube? I think that they're self destructing. To be totally honest, I feel like when you go about this, when you go about handling your 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 base in this kind of manner, the only outcome is you kill yourself ultimately. Seems I like mean, they're deliberately alienating everybody. Have, have purpose. you gotten this, Brian? I know you you upload uh, upload very very often. Have you gotten the same kind of uh, response from YouTube? Have they demonetized a lot of your videos? Not yet. I'm sure it's coming though, Beastly. Oh it's, my God! It it's seems a to very be coming in shifts. Eye opening thing. Man. A lot of the people that I I am friends with in the Destiny community, it started happening last week. Um, and it happened to you what yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah. I couldn't believe it, it. I could not believe it. Like it's. I'm I'm sure I'm on the list. It's just kind of going through people. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it. You're fucked. Wow. You know? it, it sucks. It really sucks. If you if you are, you know, a, a YouTube channel with a million subscribers and your videos, your old videos get a thousand views a day, you can probably get it reversed, right? You might be able to just go back, change the title. Maybe it was like for a weapon review and you can probably get it reversed. Uh, but if you're a small guy, you're fucked. You're fucked. It's a Unreal. shame. Unbelievable. And, like, and, and like, what? So in the Destiny community, right? It's like somebody wants to put out a weapon review. Like, how is that not? Like, what? What advertiser is going to have a problem with a video game weapon review? <laughs> Unreal. Unbelievable. People want to reach the most amount of people with their advertisements, and gaming is without a doubt a massive portion of youtube massive well, portion seems to me like they're doing this shit on purpose like they're like they're getting ready to make a big change and they want to push as many people out as they can before they make the change maybe because like the they story. they they have to know that this is fucking bad like I, there's there's from, no way that they don't realize that they're alienating and pissing a lot of people off who are gonna have other options here very well, shortly if if youtube continues yep. to tank yes and twitch they will. Twitch is whatever YouTube is dropping. Twitch is walking right behind them and picking it up and saying, we'll carry that. Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll do Twitch that. Is... Well, we'll talk about that after the show, Briar. You said you're going to be uploading your videos. If I can do that on, on my Twitch channel, I'll do that. Because yeah. I, you know what? One thing you can't get back, and this is the aspect of it that irritates me more than anything else, and I mean it. You can't get your fucking time back. I've sat here for hours and hours, hundreds of hours, making videos, probably thousands of hours at this point. Talking about stuff, you know, and, and editing. And, bro, you know how much work goes into that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden for some blanket thing to happen, it says all that work means nothing, but we haven't even told you why. We can't even explain to you why. But now all that work means nothing. Right. You, you almost and at this point feel And then not communicate, like, the standards. And, like, why, like, what it is about this video that got it flagged. And not communicate that, I think, is really fucked. It's because it's all automated and there's so much shit getting flagged that even, you know, there's no way that every person there could handle it. Like, they need to work on their algorithm and their text-to-speech because it sounds like Apple developed their text-to-speech and it sucks. You know what I mean? Like, if you ever try to use it on your phone, you know what I mean? It sucks, man. It's, the, it's just How not quite you, there Wilson? yet. How dare you insult someone? I mean, How you know. How dare you? It is, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> but... I don't have a big YouTube channel, and when I upload a video, it's strictly for fun. You know what I mean? And I would be pissed, and this isn't monetized, but if they took it down or didn't allow people to view it, you know, because it was video game the violence thing, or something, Wilson, I'd be just as thing. upset as you guys. If your video gets flagged like this, it also doesn't come up in for anybody like in search results for anybody but your subscribers. So. Mm. Somebody who gets all their videos flagged means that they're going to have a really hard time getting growth on their you YouTube know, that channel. Br that brings up another thing, too. There's there's people that I've been subscribed to that I just got unsubscribed to. Oh, yeah. That's been going on for, for no reason. And I Happened know if I, I haven't 
unsub to anyone. Like I watch people's content for a while before I decide to subscribe to them. And if I was to unsub, it'd have to be a pretty damn good reason to that I would remember yeah. and be well, like, I'm not going back to watch their videos. But I've been unsubscribed for no reason. You know what I mean? And the only thing that they had to say about it was uh, they put out a post. I think it was on Twitter saying that it wasn't even their fault. It's, they basically tried to cover it up like it wasn't their fault. You know, they made it, me. It, they made me un unsub to Briar probably about ten months ago. I didn't know what the hell happened. Yeah. You know, I'm looking through my videos. I see one of Briar's videos. It says subscribe. I was like, what? I yeah. clicked on subscribe and I was expecting Briar to send me an email. I said, what the fuck, Beastly? But he never said anything. <laughs> people subscribe. I didn't know what happened, and it happened it, to me with with quite a few people I'm subscribed to too over the last year. Yep. Yeah. So YouTube I, has a lot of problems. Every time I man. upload a video, Beastly, uh, like you can watch it. Um, you can watch the subscription number on my channel. Dip. Wow. As I hit upload. And that's been happening since January. So it's, there's something going on where instead of it showing up in their feed, it's just making people unsubscribe. Right. It's like Maker took over YouTube. And it's like the same draconian thing that happened with Maker, Briar, how they purged everyone who was who was uh, partnered with Maker. Uh, after the whole thing with PewDiePie, it seems like YouTube wants to purge all their their base so it's for funny, a handful you, of people. I was using Bing as a search engine before the show, and you guys are like, why the fuck are you using Bing? This is fucking why. Because, you know, YouTube is a search engine. You know, Google is a search engine. I, I'm i fucking done with right. Google. Like, I'm fucking right, done with Peter. them. Like, I, I, don't right. want, I don't want any part of their fucking phones. I don't want any part of their business model. I don't want any part, what, I don't want any part of any part of YouTube or any part of Google because... Their, their business is selling our information. It always has been. That is how they make a dollar, right? Is every time you use Google and you use Gmail, they're aggregating your data and they're selling it. That's that's Google's business plan. And I'm fucking done with it. I'm fucking done with it. I'm not using them anymore. Right on, Brian. I swear to God, you just fucking changed me. <laughs> Bing it is. Bing it is, man. I Bing. mean, if they're fucking us like this. I'm sorry. I've always la laughed and joked about Bing. But at this point, <laughs> it's hitting it's hitting home, Wilson. It's hitting home literally right now. This is a, a I mean, I, I'm not a huge YouTube channel, but I look forward to my little checks every month. This is going to put a, a huge dent in that for no reason. And, and it makes me, I'm feeling like now I'm really going to slow down the work. I just did 10 videos yesterday. I'm like, what did I do that for? If they're going to fucking flag them, all professionally done, you know, good videos based on news topics, they're going to get flagged. And I, I just can't do it. Yeah, I, can't I don't even that. get a paycheck from them, and it, you know, just hearing your guys's concerns and frustrations is making me concerned and frustrated. And I have a question for you guys: What can? Because I don't really particularly consider myself a content creator. Like I know you guys, this is a huge part of your life. What can viewers, like people like myself, who are a viewer, what could we do to help? Besides, Support don't use ad block. Turn yeah, it off well, for YouTube. It's a few seconds of your life. It's fine. You'll get it back later when you're not doing something else. It'll be fine. Like, but what else can people do besides not use AdBlock? If if there's people out there who want to, the only way I can see it is supporting us on Twitch or supporting us on Patreon. You know, if there's someone who you enjoy their content, someone you enjoy their personality and what they do, find them on Patreon. Throw them a dollar, a dollar a month. That that helps out. You know, and it keeps people like Colin Moriarty. He has a great YouTube channel, but it's not monetized at all. He's completely supported that may be by the Patreon. path forward, right? Is to yeah. just turn you off mon who monetization. You. And, you know, if if you feel like throwing me a dollar once a month, go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, I know, think that, that's that may be the path forward is to cut YouTube out of the monetization loop altogether. Yeah, and that's a way to fuck YouTube. You yeah. guys check out my Patreon page. There'll be a link in the description of my YouTube channel. <laughs> well, I would take it even a step further and say that if they're – because there's going to be some people who say, hey, this doesn't affect me. You know what I mean? I'll find my content elsewhere. You know what I mean? But to the people who don't want to find their content elsewhere, tweet YouTube. Let them know. Be mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm not a content creator and, you know, I'm not exactly a fan of what you guys are doing. And, you know, as much as it's a touch, touchy subject of YouTubers getting paid, time is the most finite resource on this planet. Mm -hmm. And... These people put a lot of time and effort into their videos, and they should get paid for their time. Everybody else gets paid for their fucking time. Why shouldn't YouTubers? You know what I mean? So if you really do enjoy what they're doing, 
I would say take it to YouTube. Or if you don't like what YouTube's doing, let them know about it. Tweet at them. Say, hey, I think you guys need to publicly come out with some information about it. Publicly address it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And what what it is is right is that you know a lot of YouTubers started off on YouTube because they really enjoyed you know either the game they were they were playing and they wanted to share that that joy or they really enjoyed uh, you know making the videos or doing the doing the or the montages or whatever right for whatever reason they they started doing YouTube and they started really enjoying it and then you start kind of you, know, you, just, you, you monetize your channel. Like, hey, I'll take $5 a month. I'll take $10 a month. I'll take $200 a month, you know, just for doing what I love doing. And then all of a sudden you start thinking, well, I'm making more money making YouTube videos than I am being at work, right? So I can sit here and for eight hours a day, make the best fucking content I can make instead of, you know, going to work and, you know, basically making somebody else money. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, you, you usually see a pretty dramatic content, like kind of increase, right? Is all of a sudden somebody who was maybe uploading two to three times a week uh, with short videos, all of a sudden goes and starts making longer videos or more often than making videos because they can support themselves with that YouTube revenue. But now uh, that's going to end, and you're going to see. I think. I think you're going to see a lot of YouTubers uh, stop. They're just going to stop, right? Either they can they can support themselves by switching platforms to something like Twitch, or they're just going to have to go get a fucking job because yeah. YouTube is just not going to be... So all of a sudden, all the content that people have gotten used to, like these daily Destiny videos from all these content creators or you know daily Call of Duty videos or Battlefield videos, all of this content, it's going to end. You know, like there's going to be some guys, you know, who have a million subscribers who could keep doing it. There's going to be other guys who have 100,000 subscribers who just can't afford it anymore, you know? I mean, I'm a small it's YouTuber, a uh, and, and that was actually, I thought, I was like, if I got to sit here for, you know, a few hours a week doing this and it's not going to matter, I got to find another way to, to disseminate this information. Yeah, and also YouTube small just, YouTubers are not going to be able to grow under this new yeah. system. Like, they're just not. I mean, if half of your videos are not even getting searched, like, they're not searchable, like, how the fuck are you going to grow? Wow. It's hard enough to grow already. Yeah, you know, the current system. Now, if half of your videos just don't get searched, fucked. fucked. What a fucking they, they, nightmare! They really, man. they really screwed me. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Honestly, that was a huge wake up call yesterday. Probably the most angry I've ever been since I started my YouTube channel back in 2013. Yeah. Make right, a diss so- track. Make a diss track. Diss track. You diss can monetize track, the diss shit track, out of that. Track. Diss track. Diss track. <laughs> Do it, Beastly. Make a YouTube Google diss track. Let them know. If, if they ask else for is doing it, it if, if that's the hot shit right now. Drama sells on YouTube, baby. If you guys come to my my <laughs> my, my uh, Twitter and you guys ask for a diss track, if I get enough people who want a diss track, I'll get back in the studio and I'll fucking diss Google so damn hard. I'm gonna spend Still the next two hours just creating weapon. Twitter Twitter accounts so I can I can ask you multiple times. <laughs> 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 Hashtag BC diss track. Yeah. <laughs> wanna see uh, it. All right. Here's, here we go. Are we gonna switch the topic? Uh, you know what? Boy, we got a couple of pressing. Yo, Let me see. Wilson, tell me about Warframe, dude. Do you guys want to talk about Warframe? I want to talk about some Warframe because this game. Let's talk about some Warframe. I swear, got to get it from every angle. Everywhere I look, I'm looking at Warframe. I got Tefty talking about it. Wilson's talking about it. I'm seeing it on Twitch from all my favorite YouTubers. Like all of a sudden, or I'm, all, all my favorite streamers. All of a sudden, they're playing it. What the fuck is going on here, Wilson? Dude, it was Warframe. four years old. It came free with my PlayStation 4. It is, and it's <laughs> changed drastically, apparently, from uh, the pay-to-win stigma to now pay-to-skip. So you're not paying to win. You're just paying to skip progress at this point, and I'll iterate a little bit more about that later. But Warframe is definitely a game that fills my appetite for something close to Destiny. Wow. I'm not going to say that this is the next destiny or if you're not playing destiny and you want some you know you want the next destiny thing that this is it but it does itch the scratch or scratch the itch so to speak you know what i mean so um it has things like awesome gunplay there's tons of space magic tons of grinding and really good loot drops you know like that come with that grinding um 
sadly, the story hasn't really developed too much. I kind of was talking to Briar about this before the podcast that the story kind of starts off strong and then it kind of plateaus. And then from what I've heard later in the game, the story ramps back up. I could be could be misled on that, but it started off very strong at the beginning. Um, like I said, it's very grindy and RNG based. Um, some items take like days to craft. So ultimately the game is a third person looter shooter and it takes the shooting and the looting to pretty extremes. Like there are tons of particle effects going on across the screen. You have tons of different warframes to choose from. So warframes would be similar to a class in destiny, be it Titan hunter warlock. There are tons of different warframes that you can get that have a different game, like gameplay style. So, for instance, uh, Frost Prime is obviously a lot of ice-based attacks. You know, it's going to do really good damage towards fire-based enemies. Then there's things like Excalibur, where it's all about the melees. You know, you're going to be doing strong melee attack. Um, there's, uh, man, dude, there's, like I said, I've barely even scratched the surf surface so listen, on this game. I got a question for you. Bring it Way on. Back in the day when we used to do the Beastly Thought Show, we used to have Not Too Nerdy on, and he was talking about this game, and he he was sure really was. addicted about it. To it, this was four years ago, I bet. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I was all into what he was saying until mm -hmm. he said this: "Yeah, I bought a new Warframe for seventy dollars." <laughs> yeah, he did. He sure did. <laughs> so here's yeah, the I was thing: like, what? <laughs> if you have Twitch Prime, you can get a Warfare for or Warframe for free. But Twitch Prime is what, like eighty, ninety dollars a year? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're still paying eighty, ninety dollars for a Warframe. You don't have to do that. You can go into so there's these things called relics that are equivalent to engrams in Destiny. But the only thing is you have to grind the mission to get a specific relic that has what you're looking for. So there's different tiered relics with different numbers and letters, alpha, numerical, all the stuff. And only certain ones may have the pieces you're looking for. So if you're trying to build a crossbow, you need the string, the up, the upper and lower limb, and the uh, the handle for it. So one of those relics might only have the handle in it. So you not only have to grind the mission to get the correct relic, but then when you go to play the mission to open the relic, you don't just take the relic to the cryptarch. No, no, you got to run another mission, do specific things to open that relic, and it'll pick one of four possibilities or five possibilities in that relic. So there's so many layers of RNG of you could finally get the relic that you're looking for that might have, you know, Ash Prime, which is another Warframe. It might have a piece of his armor that you're looking for, but it just didn't drop at the end. So it can be pretty frustrating. You can get these Warframes for free. You don't have to buy them. You do, however, have to buy more space if you want as many Warframes or weapons as you can carry. Like Vault Space? Or like... Kind of. And the in-game currency is called Platinum. And you can buy Platinum straight out with money if you want to. Sure, it's an option. Or you can take the grinding a step further, go make your Warframe, and then go to the social space and sell it for platinum to other players <clears throat> so you can trade for other gear or you can say nah dude i just want it's all about that platinum it's all about them benjamins you know you want that real money you know oh, so it, that's interesting yeah, <clears throat> it is so like you can you can purchase it with real money you can trade for it you can beg borrow steal do whatever you got to do to get this gear and uh some of the things in this game take days to craft man like uh what yeah i had what was it? Well, I started a pair, a uh, pair of swords last night, and it had a twelve-hour crafting time on it. So I was like, "Sweet, so it, I'll craft it, this, go to bed, and I'll wake up tomorrow, and I'll have dual, dual swords." Quick you know? question: Is it like what Briar was talking about a week or two ago, where he said in World of Warcraft, someone told him he had to uh, meditate? That was EverQuest. 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 Is this like that, where you have to sit and meditate in order to craft? Or are you able to still do things in the game? No. If you want to craft something, you take it to your bench, your your foundry. You tell it to craft it, and all this stuff is in your spaceship. So it, this little machine is doing all this crafting and stuff. While you're off doing missions, you can craft as many things. As far as I've come to see, I had like four or five things crafting at once last night. So 
when I went to bed, the clock was ticking. So when I got up today and a uh, little bit about halfway through my stream today, my swords that I started to craft last night were done. Nice. So you can do whatever you got to do in the meantime. And that's what Sethi does. He'll start crafting shit. Oh, this only takes a half hour. Let's go bust out some relics. Let's go grind relics. Let's go progress further in the storyline. And you go to just about every planet and every fucking moon in this solar system. And I would comfortably say that every planet and moon has at least 15 locations on it. Missions, different types of missions that you can go do. Um, and each of them can drop separate relics. Like they have unique relics just for their own location. Correct. So, like, I even have, like, a cheat sheet ne next to me here. So, I'm looking for a Meso S2 relic. And those can drop on Mercury, Earth, and Venus on three specific missions on each planet. So, like, I, if I want a chance to get that S2 rank relic, I would have to go to one of the missions that I have written down here. And grind you it out. Play. I get it. He's got I'm graph paper. <laughs> he got a fucking diary. That's, that's I can't. Fuck. I can't remember shit, man. You guys know this, so I gotta write it down, dude. I'm like, look at all these letters and numbers and shit. I can't. I can barely. I can't remember that. I, I got a question for you, Wilson. All right, so I like Briar. Downloaded this game when the PS4 first came out as a free to play game, and that free to play, uh, you know, connotation mm -hmm. made me, you know, shy away from it and play shittier games like. Um, Battlefield 4. Now, being that the game came out all those years ago, is it is it too late for someone who's never really got into the game, never really played it, or is there still joy to be had in people like myself and Briar? Because I just put it on my PS4 Pro the day before yesterday. Kate has it on her PS4. Briar, I'm sure you can download it or you already have it. Is it too late for people like us who want to just get in and try it, you know, who've never played the game? Nope, I'm really glad you asked that question because I did the exact same thing that you guys did. I think I downloaded it during the uh, Dark Below to... No, it was House of Wolves to Taken King. In between that era, I downloaded it and I was like, man, this game looks so awesome, but what the fuck is this? Like, there's... Believe it or not, I felt like I knew more about what was going on in Destiny's vanilla story than I did at the beginning of this game. Holy shit. I shit you not. I still don't know what the fuck is going on. There's clearly a bad guy. And I know what they look like. But that's like about it. It sounds a lot like Destiny. But, wow. But, but uh, the I don't think it's too late because that's exactly what I did. And this game has changed drastically since you last downloaded it. The look of it, the optimization of it. And it's and it's free. And like I said, it's not so much a pay to win or pay to play. It's a pay to skip. So you can go discover these blueprints or you could buy them. You could buy them not with platinum, but with actual in-game currency. You can buy the blueprints and then you got to find the get the pieces from the relics to create it and stuff like that. Or you could just skip all that and buy it with platinum. So, I mean, it's really about how devote, how, either how bad you want something or how much or little of time you're willing to put into something. All right, and so there's people there's people out there that have started broke and have thousands of platinum in the game now. All right, so the, the, the obvious question is, Briar, when are we going to start this? I think I'm going to start this week. I, I really okay. do. Like I, This one's been on my mind for a long time. Um, and I, I want to give it a shot. And now that you know, maybe I got a couple of friends who are playing it, because it, it seems like a game that's more fun with friends. Uh, yeah, I'd like to jump in and start start up. I, I'd like to take this moment to apologize to my kids, uh, Brett, Brandon, who've been telling me for the last two years, Dad, you got to play Warframe. I'd say, shut the hell up. Go stand in the corner. <laughs> I, I apologize, do. son. My, You're my only bad, right. the only bad thing I have to really like say about it is that I feel like I discovered it too late, man. D2 is like right on the horizon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to care less about this game because I will say you got to put a good like 10, 12 hours into it before you really ah, can start grinding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And like, so you, you really got to put a little bit of time into it before it really starts to like take off and you start to see like, you know, what lies under the surface. But the good news is that if there's ever a, a Destiny 2 drought, it'll still be there. Yeah. Actually, the game Warframe is getting like a huge expansion too. Is it October that's that's coming? Like right after D two. Yeah. Damn shame it's coming after D two. 
Imagine if they had gotten it out this the summer. Timing, the timing of that. It's like they, they want to keep their Warframe players in there. Don't go to Destiny 2. We got this awesome expansion going on. But, I mean, people will play both. Like I said, I'm going to be all about no life in Destiny 2 when it comes out. And then if it's no any life point, in it. I mean, we got any nine point, days till the PC beta. The PC beta is going to oh. end and then the game comes out. I'm I'm kind of glad they did it that way. Me too. To be honest, it gives us a little something like a little little teaser beforehand. Um, but yeah, man, I think you guys should pick it up. And if you know, if you guys have, I have barely scratched the surface on explaining this game. If there are any of you who are really really interested and want to know more about the mechanics, I'm going to shout out Tefty Tef did a really awesome video on Warframe for beginners, and it's a very in depth very detailed explanation as to what's going on. So I would suggest Sweet. that you guys go over there and give that a look. Check that out. Because not only is it a good video, but, it, you know, Tefty sounds amazing. Yeah, so. he does. Voice. <laughs> that voice. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right so, so that's Warframe for me. Yeah, it's something I'm definitely going to try. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, Brian, one more question. Can... Is it crossplay? Can I play with, like, if I'm on PC, can I play with PS4, guys? No, and not only that, um... Something I should say before you start a character, you are locked into that character when you start it. You, there's no make another character, nothing. Like, you would have to physically contact them and have them reset your account, which they're probably not going to do. If you're like, hey, I picked the wrong Warframe, they're, they're not going to reset your account. They're just going to tell you to find it in-game. So there is no multiple characters. You have an account on PlayStation. You have an account on PC. And you know whatever platform, other platforms that it's available so, for. Wait, wow, if I that's interesting. When I make a character, I pick a Warframe that I don't necessarily start the game with. I have to go find it. No, no, no. You start with the Warframe, but I'm just saying if you started and you had like player's remorse on your first character that you picked, there's no going back and like restarting and picking another character. You, if you wanted to start another character, you got to find that shit in game. Those Warframes. So a Warframe means your character. You, when you say Warframe, start a character, yes, you're yes. Warframe is like your character, your classes, like your class. Which your Warframe abilities. should I pick? Excalibur. Okay. Damn it! See Wilson. Uh, <laughs> years ago, years ago when this game came out, I actually booted it up and started it, and I played for like five minutes. Like oh, I want to go play Battlefield or some shit. Mm -hmm. And so I'm guessing that that character is still like in a dark closet waiting for me to come back. <laughs> <laughs> that right. sucks so bad. Oh, well, at least yeah. at least now I know. Yeah, see, Spiffy in chat knows. Long story short, pick Excalibur. <laughs> my pick boy Excalibur. or what? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll <All right>. do. <laughs> so we got two remaining Revolver topics. Uh, Briar, do you want me to go first, or you, would you like to jump back? Go ahead, BC. All right, so this is a very sensitive topic. There are a lot of us out here who probably won't answer honestly, but has any game in the history of your life made you cry? Okay, so I know this is a sensitive topic as we're all alpha males who breathe fire and eat bricks for lunch. But honestly, <laughs> have you ever played a game that has touched you in a way so unexpected that it made you cry? I honestly have had a few of these games in my life elicit this response. Uh, Final Fantasy VII was an epic game, and when Ares died, a part of the teenage beastly, I have to put that in quotations, did as well. He wasn't well, a teenager when that game came out. He was like 41. <laughs> <laughs> it's a midlife crisis. <laughs> I cried like a bitch uh, when Ares died. And that was the, I think that was the first time any game was so narratively driven that made you care about the characters. And then when one just out of nowhere passed away in a very brutal fashion, you wanted to kill a video game character. And I actually did. I cried like a bitch. Um, and so that was the first time I ever felt this way. To a smaller degree, um, I don't know if it was actual tears, but I do remember feeling like crying uh, when I completed the game Shadow of the Colossus on my PlayStation 2. Yeah, you know, I got to say, basically, you are a bitch. Uh, video <laughs> I'm games, trying to be like Gary. Video, <laughs> video games making you cry. These things are like half-assed movies. Like, they're not even like nearly as impactful as movies. You've got to be crazy, man. Like, like what, you, what happened? Did somebody, somebody like uh, make fun of you in preschool? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know my whole life story. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. So the most recent game that's ever done this to me, and I don't give a fuck. You could be the manliest <laughs> man on fuck. earth. 
<laughs> you could be a thug, you know, Tupac bandana thug life tattoo. If this didn't do something to you, you don't deserve to be alive. Uh-huh. It was uh, the Dead moment inside. when you're heartless. All right. Yeah, you definitely are. This is a spoiler alert for anyone who has been on Mars for the past few years. When Sarah, <laughs> I haven't been Sarah, on Mars on Mars in the last few years. All right, no one when, has. When Sarah, <laughs> <It's all> fake. <laughs> Joel's daughter died in The Last of Us. Um, it it was a huge shock, and in in the course of the first twenty minutes of the game, they built up these characters and actually created tangible bonds and people that you, you you you. You had an affinity towards, let's put it that way. And it, it was a real shock when, when she passed away in that game. And I actually did. I don't give a damn. I'm a man. I got a wife. You know, I got kids. You know, I'm, I'm a man, man. But I cried. And I felt a lot better when I looked next to me and my wife was crying too. She didn't. Like, she did. I married a fucking pussy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she watching right now, man. Pew, pew, pew. She knows. Give she knows pew. what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I've cried twice in the last year playing video games. One of them was just recently I was playing uh, Wolfenstein, the, the uh, New Order. I walked into a, um, like a Nazi Germany kind of embank- encampment. And, uh, you know, it was late in the day. I'd skipped lunch and there was a pretzel, soft pretzel, <laughs> sitting there on the table. And to see you that pretzel fuck. and not be able to eat that pretzel... <laughs> It hurt me deep inside, deep inside, and a, a single a solitary bit. tear ran down my cheek. <laughs> Is it perfectly salted too? Like not too much. Oh, it, not, it, it, it looked yeah, beautiful, yeah. man. I, you know, I love me a good soft pretzel, and Same. to see it there and not be able to go ahead and eat it, very upsetting. Seems like wasted effort. Time, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the other time I cried was uh, when I first got VR. I was uh, playing but it was a my... Nazi. It was a Nazi pretzel. Let's just say it in the a comments. Nazi pretzel. You're fucking crying for a Nazi pretzel. <laughs> right pretzel. <laughs> the the, the <laughs> not, other time I cried this year is when I put on VR for the first time, and I started playing a game called Racket NX, where you have to hit a ball, and I went for the overhand smash, not realizing the, the ceiling was quite so close <laughs> as it was, and I. Bashed my hand into the ceiling, and it hurt, and it hurt bad. But then I looked at the ceiling, and I had made a big gash in the ceiling with the VR controller, and I knew that I'm now gonna have to paint that ceiling. <laughs> I'm standing there, my hand hurting, gash in the ceiling, and I cried. I cried because I knew say, I'd have to paint that ceiling. <laughs> let, let me just say this for anybody who's just tuning in. That last answer was sponsored by Gary Diaz. <laughs> Absolutely it was. We love you, Gary. And you are definitely here in spirit, my friend. My man. Because Briar just shit all over my question. <laughs> Wilson. Okay. Has there ever been a, a yes. time in your... been three. <clears throat> three that come to mind. Wow. Uh, first one is uh, same as you, Beasley. Final Fantasy VII, Ares, Ares, however you like to say it. She was my first, where I was really going to make funny of this, my first crying video shit. game crush, actually. Oh. <laughs> the flower girl, man. How could you not be in love with the flower girl? She was perfect in every way. Tiffo was, Tiffo was kind of cute, too. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. But that scene was, it was like one of the first times that like I had an attachment to a character in a video game and it got fucking taken away from me. And then I legitimately was on the war path to finish that game and Sephiroth. go after the person fucking responsible. Sephiroth. Yeah. He's a dick. Fuck he's, Sephiroth. A to- he's a total dick. He's a cry baby. He I just cries the entire Sephiroth time. He's the most of- biggest. You want to talk about cry babies. He's the biggest, <laughs> baddest dude in that universe mm. and does nothing but bitch moan and complain the entire yeah. game. He's super emo. He should be in a band. <laughs> he probably did. My chemical <laughs> romance. Anyway, yes. <laughs> uh, second game that uh, made me cry. Um, let's see here. Uh, continuing with the trend, the newest Final Fantasy. I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything, but there's a scene between two main characters in there that, dude, I'd say hit me harder than really? probably. Did it involve any, a pretzel? Any, um, it may or may not have. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for you. You know what I mean? Uh, but there's a scene in there, like I said, I don't want to spoil it. It's a newer game. 
Yeah, I've, that I've, that gave me the feels probably harder than any movie that I've ever seen. Oh my god! And I'm the talking. Lion I've King? seen the Notebook. Have you ever seen I've the, seen the Yeah, I oh. have. Everything the light touches is our kingdom, Briar. Yeah. I've seen it. Okay. <laughs> Don't go over to that place, Elephant Graveyard. Yeah. I've seen the Notebook. I have sat through some tear jerking chick flicks in my seven life. Pounds. What, seven pounds. Yeller? Yeah, I, I have, have. I have. I've made the reference of you had to put me down like Old Yeller in PUBG one time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a good one. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon? <laughs> Poor Old Yeller. I, I, I got to say that after hearing that, uh, I definitely have to uh, play that game because if this, the, the narrative is that strong. People know me from the old show we used to do that I love Final Fantasy, but unfortunately, I haven't Debatable. had a chance to play. I have. God damn it, Briar. You already destroyed my question. Give me that, okay? Fake love. It's fake love. And uh, love. A, you the, sack of shit. <laughs> the, third, the third time I cried was last week when I tried to play Fortnite on console with friends and there were massive frame dips. Mm. <laughs> and that answer was, was sponsored by Gary. Yeah, was, he has infected us. Gary. He has infected us somehow. You know? For, you know, for look, real though, look. I had I had mentioned that to you guys uh in uh Twitter DMs, but there are some games that I'm just like, I'm only gonna be able to play them on PC. I don't think Destiny's gonna be that game, but no. I'm just you saying. know I'm just as upset about it as anybody that the game's running at 30 frames per second. I was really hoping for 60 frames per second for Destiny 2 on the consoles. But having played it, it's a smooth ass 30. It is a smooth 30. I'll take it. It feels great to me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'll probably uh, try it out at 60 on my, my new gaming rig. But as of right now, I'm excited for my PS4 version. I'll miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just. <laughs> Why you gotta bring that shit up, Beasley? It hurts. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, bro. Was, was there some Nazi, was there some Nazi mustard it. next to it? <laughs> yeah, was was there mustard or cheese? Because there's so a correct only answer. pretzel. It's all by itself. <laughs> Salted soft pretzel. Sitting no condiments. Just needed a friend. That's when we nobody, know the graphics have come too far, people. All the Nazis were dead. I had already killed them. There's nobody to eat that pretzel. Nobody to eat that pretzel. <laughs> oh, uh, HCG Kong said that. Uh, Uncharted 4's ending hit him, and it hit me too, man. I don't think I cried, but I was real close at the end of that that game. I was like, oh my god. What was this that is how World War One game that I'm always talking about, but I can never remember the, remember the name of? This, no. you, just, you just said it. You can never remember the name. And if yeah, you I can, can never you know, remember I'm, the name of it. It was World War One movie? World War One game. It was like a World 2D game. Mm. Ubisoft oh, oh, um, made it a few years ago. God damn it. Um, yeah, you're that guy. Um now I gotta find out. Hold that, on. that game got me pretty close. I did a playthrough uh. of that game on my channel, and it got me pretty close. The end of that game was pretty sad. All right, so uh, try and get this one around to a more positive topic. Thanks for bringing us all down, Beastly. That's what I'm here for. Gaming has actually changed my life in some pr pretty significant ways. Uh, Valiant Hearts. Valiant Hearts. Thank you very much, Beastly. Sorry, I had to do it. Well done. Gaming has changed my life in some pretty significant ways. Not only, you know, the fact that, you know, I pretty much do YouTube and Twitch for a living along with photography, but um, there's other things that I've picked up because I'm a gamer that have actually dramatically changed my life. And in fact, my entire adult life, every job I've really had has used, I've gotten because of skills that I learned because of gaming. Uh, I was in... IT for the longest time. The reason I had skills in IT was because I had got a computer when I was in high school, learned how to, you know, work that computer, fix that computer and upgrade that computer because I wanted to game on it. <laughs> and like that transferred to me uh, getting a job that was completely unrelated to what I went to college for in the IT field. And that's basically what I did for my entire adult life. I was kind of curious, you know, how has gaming changed your life? And I'd like to hear kind of like for the positive and for the negative answers here. You know, like how's it impacted your life for the positive? How's it impacted your life for the negative as well? Well, for me, my gaming uh, career started in 1984 when, when the NES came out. And before then, I was completely oblivious to video games. My parents didn't have them. I think a, a relative named Tony came over and brought it and we just... It was that moment where we realized something like this actually existed. And from that period in my life, 
I've consistently gained. So for me, it's really hard for me to say how it's impacted my life because for me, this has just been life. So I don't know what the the alternative would have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've always I've always stayed out of trouble. You know, I was always a good kid. I did my my work at school. I'd come home and versus being out in the streets, in the mean streets of Ohio, mm-hmm. where all my friends were out, you know, joining gangs and and getting girls pregnant at twelve. You know, I was at home playing Donkey Kong Country or, or, or you know, playing something great on my Super Nintendo or my Sega Genesis. And, and for me, it's always kept me away from those types of crowds. I actually see that now with my kids. You know, they have a lot of friends who are doing things that they weren't raised to do. I'm very proud of my sons. Uh, they tell me about it. They come home and they talk to their dad. And they say, Dad, I can't believe somebody I went to school with my whole life is doing this now. Or they're selling this now. Or this girl is a completely different person than the person she used to be. She's selling PS4s and, out of the back of a truck at the at the gas station now. Yeah, selling I mean, Yobo and like, oh, that was portables. <laughs> that was yeah. him? Good selling luck. Yobo and SNES portables out the trunk of their car. Oh my god, I mean, the lows that they used to come to. Thanks Yobo. for the sale, my friend. We love, we, we, we love you, Gary. It's always close. Let me get but, two. Let me get two. <laughs> <laughs> But for me, like I said, it's always kept me out of trouble. And and really, my adult life has been um, crafted around my love of gaming. I started doing things that I didn't do when I was young. I started collecting video game figures. I started, you know, talking to people about video games and bringing people into this this world. People like my younger brother, who was rich, who didn't play video games. One day he came over my house and he saw me playing a game that he thought was really incredible. He went straight to the store and bought the system, bought the game. Now it's all he does. So for me, it's good to give people alternative entertainment. You know, the bad side of this thing is that there's so many other things I like to do, but when you invest in a video game, it takes time to play it. You you get invested in worlds and characters, and by the time you get done with it, especially us, we're we're always up on the next thing. And there's so many things out in the real world that I want to do. Sure, I go out and play tetherball every day. I love it. Who doesn't? But there's other things I want to start doing. I want to go deer hunt, (laughs) right? I've never done it because I can buy, you know, a Cabela's game. And yeah. so, Deer for Hunter me, is I, lit, man. I love Deer Hunter. I know, but you can't eat the meat afterwards, and that's the part mm-hmm. I want. But if you what play it at a bar, they you can eat that meat. Just order a pizza. Yeah, Briar just pretend it's deer. Bro, mm-hmm. just made my negative <laughs> into a positive. But <laughs> right? for me, that's the only downside to gaming. As much as I do, and as much as Briar does, as much as Wilson does, is it takes away from other things and. You have to really uh, be concise with your, with your priorities and your timing, especially having families like us, you know, having children, having wives and having responsibilities. You got to pick an hour. You got to pick a day. You got to know exactly what you're doing because you can't let it take over your real life. And that's the only downside of gaming. But for me, I've had probably more positives than negatives. I love being a gamer. Uh, I think it's a part of my identity. People who know me and even people who don't get a, a quick idea that I'm someone who's serious about this this form of entertainment, and I love gaming in general. Nice, nice. I've got definitely two ends of the spectrum here, sort of metamorphosis throughout my years with video gaming. So um, much like everybody else here, I mean, I got started gaming at a very young age. I was born in 84. Um, got playing some Super Mario Brothers. Uh, it was really awesome as a kid. I was, I believe the word is introvert, where you don't mm-hmm. really like socialize a whole lot. Yep. Mm-hmm. Was very much so an introvert, very shy, loved my video games. It's all I did. Did my homework, was on bed at time, did everything that I was supposed to do. Started getting out of gaming around high school time. Um, I wonder, I wonder N- why. N64 was a huge letdown for me as a kid. I was really excited about that console. And aside from Mario, Mario, Shadows of the Empire, and Zelda, like there was nothing I wanted to play on that console. And Killer Killer Instinct Gold, man? Killer Instinct Gold? I wasn't really. I just play play it on Super Nintendo. (laughs) (laughs) That game sucked! (laughs) uh, (laughs) But uh, I like the Super Nintendo version better. But um, and the GameCube, same thing, man. Just, like, didn't do it for me, dude. It, it didn't... So, like, I was a big Nintendo fanboy. Uh, I started casually playing PlayStation 1. That's where I got into, like, my Final Fantasy and, you know, my first video game crush, you know, Ares, this and that. And so started, get, started getting into high school 
and became less of an introvert and more of an extrovert. Did I say that right? Extrovert? Yes, yes you yeah, did. yeah. Okay. Sure did. All right. Sometimes I make up words. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but uh, I started socializing more and socializing more and more and became the stereotypical social butterfly and went down a very destructive path of partying, shirking responsibility, you know, all this stuff. All just that good not- teenage stuff. All that, all that fun <laughs> stuff that nobody tells you to do. Don't do that shit, by the way. Just do your work. And, uh, but just went down a really, really downward spiral of like just self destructiveness, man, of partying all the time and all this stuff. And it wasn't until I got back into video gaming oh, wow. that it helped. It was the checks and balances, so to brought speak. Brought back some right normalcy, there. normalcy into your life. Brought huh? back some normalcy kept my hands busy idle hands at the devil's playground you know that's a very very true statement um and it just kind of i i was able to learn from being you know even i did learn some things during those time periods and like how to socialize and things like that so when i came back to gaming and it was more online focused it, it worked out perfectly wow i was i was able to socialize with people no problem because i was out partying you know i mean i've talked to all walks of life dude like all walks of life you know, it's no different on the internet, man. Like, I'm not afraid to talk to a stranger just because I don't know him. You know what I mean? I've met some of my greatest friends in my life. I'm doing a podcast today because of it. You know what oh, I really? mean? Because of because of Who's online podcast? gaming. <laughs> yeah, we're not just shooting the shit. I thought we were supposed to be shooting the shit. Shooting the shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, that's it's, a beautiful story, man. It, re- it really, it really is. Else. Like, it's something from both ends of the spectrum of not playing video games and being social, and not that you can't play video games and not be social. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I've made some amazing friends online. I'm friends with so many different people, so many different communities and crowds in this video game uh, world, and. I love it, man. If I could go back and do it all over again, I'd do the exact same shit that I did before. Slow Um, clap. I'm not typing it right now, but that's a fucking slow clap. And God damn it. um, It's one of those situations, Wilson, where you wonder where you would have been if it hadn't been for a a game or a system to come along when it did. But it sounds like what happened to you was absolutely needed. You know, uh, my brother's an introvert. He still is. He He doesn't play his games online. He has a PS4 Pro, but he's so introverted. He hasn't really played any games offline. I mean, online. He doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't have a social life. So he's just at home doing push-ups, looking at his wife. And, uh, you know, maybe he needs to put the games away and get out there and party a little bit so he can come back as a complete Or he can play some Destiny 2 with his brother and his clanmates. Joe is good, Brian, but he's not that good. You don't got to be good to have fun and be in the clan. I don't even think about how to, how to get into a... I, every time I try to get into a clan, they, they, they let me in until I take off the fucking hood. And they, think, <laughs> they always think it's good until I take it off. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Wilson, what, what happened to you is a beautiful story, man. And uh, that's a great thing to hear. And like I said, you know, starting off, it, it always kept me out of trouble. And it sounds like it, it got you back, you know, away from things that could have potentially hurt you in the long run. Yep. Got me out How, of trouble. It's a great question, Briar. And I'm really anxious, you know, to hear about your positives and negatives. Or really, my positive is, was the fact that it, it's basically the reason I've been able to be gainfully employed my entire life. I mean, my father bought me a PC uh, when I was in high school uh, so that I could learn how to use it and go to college. I basically learned how to use it the summer between my senior year and my my freshman year of college. I uh, started playing some video games on it. I decided, okay, this is fun. And I'm, I've always been a tinker. I've always liked to fuck with shit. You know, like if, if I had a mountain bike, I was I was in the garage, you know, unpacking the the bearings putting new grease in the bearings i was you know trying to figure out you know what's the best chain for this bike what's the best you know what's the best shocks for this bike you know whatever i was into when i when i've been in golf i've been okay how do i reshaft a golf club how do i regrip a golf club you know like it doesn't matter the hobby i'm always i always like fucking with the gear you know the gear is always part of the fun that's one of the fun things about pc gaming too um so that's what i did is i started learning okay I mean, here's how the different pieces of the PC fit together. And this was back when it was a little more difficult. You had to know IRQs and you had to know jumper settings to put it, you know, different things together. And it was a little more difficult. So there's a lot to learn, but, you know, the internet was there. And, you know, it also was my first exposure to the internet and the fact that you could basically learn anything you wanted on the internet. And, 
you know, and then I went to school for forestry. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Really? Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's dope. You're gonna be a park to ranger, right? I wanted to be a park ranger, dude. Right? Awesome. awesome. Job. That would yeah. be. Mm. Wow. I would have never in was, a million years. While I was at, at at school, I realized, yo, the only people who nobody quits being a park ranger, right? You only die. You die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're not opening new parks. <laughs> So there's no fucking jobs here. <laughs> like there are no jobs as a park ranger. There's like zero jobs. So like that wasn't gonna thing. But at, throughout college, I had you know continued my enjoyment of PC gaming, and uh, eventually learned how to like you know do everything I needed to do. So during the summers, I started working for insurance companies in their ID departments. You know, deploying computers. And then, you know, learn stuff about that. And then I went to a couple of uh, classes, like got A-plus certified and then MCSE, MCSE certified. And, you know, I kind of did some certifications and I got some jobs. And, you know, for most of my adult life, my employment has been based around that computer my father bought me <laughs> so I could write p- papers when I went to college. That is something else, man. That yeah. is a hell of a story. Well, Heart I mean, it, so, it sounds like you got a lot, a huge degree of positives. What are the drawbacks of, of this? The lifestyle? biggest drawback for sure is that when I get truly addicted to anything, and this could be, this could be a video game. This could be golf. This could be any activity. When I truly get invested in it, I develop complete tunnel, tunnel vision. vision. Yeah. Whatever is on the periphery is not important to my, to me at all. And it's not that I'm willfully ignoring stuff. It's just that it's not in my life. It's not part of, and I've had problems with relationships. I've had problems paying bills. I've had problems in every aspect of life when I get that tunnel vision. And it's, wow. as I've gotten older, it's been easier for me to realize what's going on and to take a step back. But it's still there. Like that that problem is still there for me. When I, you know, when I get truly invested in something, mm-hmm. whether it's PC gaming, whether it's golf, whether it's mountain biking, whether it's motorcycling, whether it's everything, camping, everything but destiny. Destiny. Like, <laughs> I know. I mean everything. <laughs> like I get tunnel vision and it can it can be a very serious problem for me in my life where like just nothing else makes it. That's how I know that you and your wife are meant to be. See, sometimes you got to go through a lot of shit to find your soulmate. And I'm guessing that she understands at the beginning of next month, you're going to be stuck in tunnel world for a little bit. Yeah, she's uh, she's looking forward to it, I think. <laughs> Get out that's, of my hair. That's a marriage right there. Get we out like of here. To, when like does Destiny pretend... 2 come out? God damn. Yeah, we like to pretend that they don't like time away from us, but they like it just as much as we you're do. So, from time you're, you're, to time. you're absolutely right, right? Uh, it's healthy. And it's the same with her. It's the same with her. Yeah. You know, she she's very busy all the time, but and when I get home, less and less that she just runs straight to me in slow motion with Whitney Houston music in the background and hug me. Now it's just kind of a look out of the corner of her eye, and yeah. So I'm thinking she needs time to herself. I'm as right well. at the end. Go away. I'm pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Cut scene. Cut scene. <laughs> I uh. I'm pretty fortunate, you know, my significant other Sam is going to be taking the uh, Destiny 2 rabbit hole plunge Damn. the entire clan. So she um, she came on right about House of Wolves, started off as a solo player PvE, and she's just as good of a PvP player as I am now, which is, I'm I'm trash, let's be real. but It's really good. He's lying. <laughs> He's not trash. Yeah, I mean, he's the best goes one. Back to, goes back <laughs> to what so I was saying earlier about you don't have to be good to be in a clan. I mean, shit, they let me in Tower Life, so. Every time we played, for a majority of those games, Wilson has been at the top of the fucking scoreboard. Mm-hmm. And, and Briar's a fucking animal, so that lets you know something. Uh, and I'm, I'm just as fortunate as you, Wilson. Uh, Kate has been a gamer since I've known her. Uh, and, she, you know, she wasn't always on the right side of things. When I first met her, she had an Xbox 360. But, you know. I laid down. I laid it down for her, and she switched over to PlayStation. So she, I knew that that was my soulmate. Yeah. Now she's enjoying thirty frames per second with the rest of you fucking console peasants. <laughs> Wilson, <laughs> do you hear Gary? He's here. It sounds Gary. like Gary, but it doesn't. It doesn't sound as I'm sorry. attractive. I'm sorry. Yeah, and now he, <laughs> I can't do an English accent. Now, <laughs> basically, what you're saying up. is that Hello, you enjoy bloke. thirty frames per second on that console. <laughs> 
Where are the teraflops, <laughs> mate? Where are the teraflops? <laughs> Where are the teraflops? You got nothing here. When you play when you play on a console, it's it's just daft. Not real entertainment, not enjoyable. It's like looking at Minecraft all the time. Do you see how worthless, worthless we are about without Gary? We talk so much shit about it, but really it's because we miss him. And it's one Gary, we fucking you, Gary. love you, man. <laughs> we miss and, you. And see, Gary's here in the United States, like I said earlier, on a secret mission. He'll be back in two weeks to yes. divulge all the information he was able to obtain about the great United States. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it's, it'll be a great show. He'll be back on episode seven. He'll if you want to see a reenactment of what Gary's up to, just watch the Top Gear episode when the... Uh, the crew came to America and they had to drive from like Florida to Texas. And yeah. Pretty, pretty much replicate what Gary's going through right now. Good time. <laughs> Love you, Gary. <laughs> Ooh, and it's it's exactly two hours That's for the good, show. Right? Man, was this was show. it was a great show. I mean, right. I, I love you guys beyond beyond repair. It's just so deep in my heart, and especially today finding out that Wilson actually cried on the same shit, Wilson. We bonded today, Briar. Dude, fuck romance. You. <laughs> <laughs> soft touch, <pretzel-y laughs> an asshole. Oh, why are you gonna keep bringing up the soft pretzel? <laughs> oh. Briar, this is gonna be no- another moment where Briar cr- cries in gaming is tonight because you said that. <laughs> so hungry. I'm so hungry. You know? <laughs> Remember, guys, that Revolver Live goes live every Sunday at six o'clock p.m. Eastern at Twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is also shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel. Usually the following day, and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, questions of the week, or feedback, send them to revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. And if you would like to be uh, a part of the show, definitely send in that information. You'll be just like some of the people who had their question. Oh, actually, did we get to that question? We're going to do that question we'll, right now. We'll put it in Super. the list. We'll put it in the list, Beastly. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll put Super it Dan. The- my favorite uh, arcade game was Mortal Kombat 2. I loved it. I still love it. And it's one of my favorites of all time. Um, I do want to say, I normally I do try and get the podcast up on YouTube on Sunday night uh, so that you can watch it on Monday. The way I do that is I, I, I upload it directly from Twitch to YouTube. But for some reason, that system has not been working for me lately. Uh, so I've had to download it to my computer, then re-upload it to Twitch. Uh, which can take a number of hours. So if it doesn't make it onto YouTube on Sunday, it'll be there on Monday as soon as I can yeah. see it happen. No problem. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Wilson, you got anything you want to pimp out today? Um, also, if you want to leave us some feedback, you can hit us up in the Revolver feedback section of Briar's Discord. I'd appreciate it. That's that's where, that's where the feedback I'm supposed to mean. So hop in there. Let yeah. us know. Hey, what do you think? It's fun to hang out in the Discord, too. You know, there's a bunch of... Bunch of people in there. We're always talking about some goofy shit. So good, good people. Good fun. That's yeah. a, those are the best people. conversation. Absolutely. But, <laughs> I mean, if you want to find me on uh, Twitter, it's at Ryu Wilson. That's R-Y-U Wilson. Twitch, Wilson309. I actually did some Warframe, Warframe streaming today, so uh, probably be getting into some more of that soon. Uh, where can they find you at, Beastly, on Twitter? They can find me at Beastly underscore underscore gamer on Twitter. Wait, and two you- underscores? Yeah, the, for some reason there's already a beastly underscore gamer, asshole. Um, don't don't look at him. Make sure you get both underscores, and understood, you can always check understood. me out. Understood, understood. Check me out. <laughs> check me out on on YouTube. YouTube <laughs> at at beastly beastly gamer gamer. Thank you all so so. I think Twitch is much. fucking up. I think uh, I think Skype is fucking up again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out today. We really appreciate it. Uh, to everybody in the live stream, thank you very much. Uh, everybody in YouTube, thank you, but a little bit later. And everybody listening <laughs> in the audio-only version, I'm sorry that I forgot to record uh, the Audacity version. <laughs> so so it might sound a little bit shittier than usual. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but One episode make... without Gary. And <laughs> Everything episode, goes to shit. <laughs> he's shaking his head right now like, these fuckers. I knew it. I knew they were incapable. <laughs> <laughs> I go for just one week One week and this is what you do One, two weeks to Trump Fucking land Fucking Americans And this is what you do Trump land Alright, <laughs> thank you guys, we'll see you next week <laughs>